Okay, what we're gonna do today is go through and work out the center of gravity of this wedge along this long axis. It has some width, some length, and some height. I only wanna worry about the center of gravity in this single axis here. Uh, we don't need to go through and worry about finding the center of gravity in all three axes, uh, just, just this one. If we can do this in one axis, we can do this in all the axes. So I'll show you how to do this along the long axis today. Now, in order to go through and find the true center of gravity along this long axis, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this wedge has some mass M. Now, in reality, the mass of the wedge is actually irrelevant, um, but what I wanna do is keep this consistent with what's going on with center of gravity, because as soon as we take mass out of this, we're dealing with what's called a centroid or a center of area, and, and that's not really what I wanna get at here. We're dealing with physics, we're talking about physics here, uh, so, I want to get into actual center of gravity. Now, anytime we find the center of gravity of an object, we need to have a position with which we can measure everything relative to. So what I'm going to go through and do is I'm going to say that this edge over here of the wedge, this corner right here, is at a position of zero along what we'll call the x-axis or the, the length axis, if you want. So what we're going to work out in this problem is where along this length axis, so I'll call it the x-axis, the center of gravity is going to lie. And that is effectively a balance point, which we could balance this wedge on. Uh, now, it doesn't take too much thinking to realize uh, this end over here of the wedge has more material, therefore it's going to be heavier than this pointy end over here. So we're probably going to find that if, if we start at the center, the center of gravity is somewhere off to the right of this. Uh, so what we should be finding in this, this solution is a result that is probably greater than one half of L, but less than L. If we get some result that falls outside of that window, something's probably wrong, but I promise you, we won't get a result outside of that window. Okay, so to go through and find the center of gravity of this wedge, uh, we're gonna have to be a little bit clever about this because this wedge is a distribution of mass. It's not all just one particle at one point. It's a distribution of mass and on top of that, it's an uneven distribution of mass. Down here, there's only a little bit of mass, but over here, it's pretty heavy, or there's a lot of mass. And so we're gonna have to be a little bit clever in how we apply our, our solution to this problem, or really how we apply the equation for center of gravity. So here we've got our regular equation for center of gravity. This is looking at the mass and position of individual particles and taking and combining them and then dividing them by the total mass. So you realize this is still going to apply to this situation, but we have to be a little bit clever in how we apply this equation to the situation. So to do that, we can't so the issue here is we cannot look at the wedge as one big particle. It has lots of mass at different positions. So what we're going to have to do is look at each point along the x-axis or along the length of this wedge here in order to understand what's going on. Now a point here is only going to have a little bit of mass. The point over here will have a lot of mass. So what I want to do is take and just slice this wedge at one particular location. So what I want to do here is look at just a single slice of this wedge. Really, it's an infinitely thin slice. I, I couldn't draw it infinitely thin. You wouldn't be able to see it, but it's just a single slice. And what I want is to realize all the mass at this slice is at a single position along this, this x-axis. So we're looking at just a slice of this wedge. All of the mass inside of this slice is at a single position. So when we look down at this, this equation right here for center of gravity, if we're looking at the mass at a particular position, we're gonna have some mass all at a single position. The mass here is not the same as the mass at a, of a slice somewhere over here though. So we're gonna have to be a little bit careful in how we handle this. But ultimately, if we can come up with the mass at a single point, we're gonna be able to, knowing its position, come up with the total center of gravity of the wedge by looking at all of the slices all the way along this entire wedge. 
Now, in order to know how much mass here, we really have to know how large this wedge even is. So the first thing I want to go through and do is work out the volume of this slice. Now realize, even though we're dealing with a wedge here, this slice right here is really nothing other than a box. It's a three-dimensional box. Now I know you can get into the issue of what's going on right here at this, this top edge of the box, but if we make this box very, very, very thin, infinitely thin even, we can ultimately say that right here, this is nothing other than a box. There is no slant to the top of this. And so the volume of our slice can be given simply by the length times the width times the height of this slice or this box which we produced. Now, the width of the box, that, that one's pretty easy to deal with because it's just the width. But it's the, the length and the height that we're gonna have to work on a bit here. So, the volume of our slice, that's gonna be our width multiplied by the length. Now realize this slice, this is all at a single position, x, okay? Now, so the tendency is to say, well, therefore it has zero thickness, and, and that's not true. I want you to realize the thickness of this box is not zero. It is, pulling a little calculus into this, a thickness dx. That is this dimension right there. So this has some thickness to it. It's dx thick. So when we're looking at the volume, we're going to have a width times a thickness. That's going to be dx multiplied by the height. Now we run into another issue here. The height of the wedge, capital H, is not the height of our slice. The slice is shorter than that because it's moved along the wedge here. Depending on where we're talking along the wedge, the height is going to vary. Now I'm gonna go through and say that the height here is some value little h. I say it's little h just because it's, it's smaller than big h. But what we have to do is relate this back to the geometry of the wedge. So for now, we're just gonna say this is h. There's this dimension along here. All right. So the question comes up, how do we relate the height to the variables given to us in the problem here? And I want you to look at this triangle right here formed by the length and the height of the overall wedge. I want you to realize that is a similar triangle to the triangle which is formed by this base that is X and this height H. Ultimately, we can say that they're similar triangles. They have the same tangent. Uh, and so really we can say that little h over x. That is the, the rise over the run of this inner triangle formed by this small base and this small height is equal to the overall height of the wedge divided by the overall length of the wedge. And so it's easy enough to, to rearrange this. And now we can say h is equal to capital H over L multiplied by X, whatever position we're worried about. So what we've done here is we've related the height of our slice to the position of the slice along the wedge. So now let's take this and substitute this in up here and I'm gonna pull the DX out to the side just to clean it up a little bit. So what we have now is the volume of a slice. Uh, and I want you to realize this isn't the total volume of the entire wedge. This is just an infinitely small volume of our, our infinitely thin slice. So I don't actually want to call this the total volume. I'm, I'm going to call this DV, an infinitely small chunk of the total volume. I'll put that DV in up here as well. Now here we are, we're working on this problem, and all of a sudden we've got a DX showing up. It looks like we're gonna to start to have an integral. Uh, so you know what, let's let's go ahead and just, just integrate, just for funsies, let's see what happens here. So I wanna integrate the volume of this slice, or the volume of this, this little slice that we've taken out of our wedge, and I wanna look at all of those slices. Now because I'm integrating with respect to X, W, H, and L, those are just constants. So I can put my integral symbol right here. And I'm gonna be integrating from zero 
all the way up to some value L. I wanna look at all of my slices along this entire wedge here. So we're going from zero to L. So we're really just dealing with the integral of, of X, of W, H over L, one half X evaluated from zero to L. Whoop, squared, oh my gosh. That would have been horrible to leave that out. So let's evaluate this thing. And I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and we should see something that's pretty familiar to us. What we've done here is we've, we've come up with this term one half length times width times height. And I want you to realize that is in fact the volume of this entire wedge. In taking and integrating all of these little slices or the volume of all of these slices, what we've done is we've found the overall volume of this wedge. When we take an infinite number of, or an infinite sum of tiny little volumes, that gives us the total volume. So while this is not the answer to the question, this is not the solution to the problem, we come up with a kind of interesting thing here, even though we integrated at the wrong point in time, and that is we found the total volume of this wedge. So now that we've found the volume of an individual slice, and we've found the total volume of our wedge, we still haven't solved this problem, but we're, we're well on our way here. So let's take the next step here and, and go back to the center of gravity, and remember what it is we're trying to do. We're trying to come up with the mass of each slice at a particular position. Now to get from the volume of a slice to the mass of a slice, what we need to understand is the density of the material here. So to find the mass of a slice, remember density is mass over volume. Or we could go so far as to say mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. So if I want the mass of a single slice, I simply need to multiply the volume of that slice multiplied by the density of the material. So in looking at this wedge right here, uh, we're gonna actually use this way of looking at density to come up with the mass of that slice. So the mass will be given by the density multiplied by the volume of this slice, dV. Now, density, all of a sudden we've interjected density in this problem, how are we gonna find density? Well, realize we know the total volume of this wedge and we know the mass. All right, so the density of the material, uh, knowing that that's going to be the mass over the volume, we've got a total mass M over the volume of our entire wedge. So it's gonna be one half length times width times height. So knowing our density term, we can now substitute that in here and we'll get a mass of a slice. So the mass of the slice is going to be our density that's m over one half length times width times height multiplied by our volume of a slice. That's width times height over length x dx. Now in looking at this, it looks a little bit silly because we have a total mass and the mass of a slice. So to differentiate between these two, I'm gonna call this dm. This isn't the total mass. It's just the mass of an infinitely small little chunk. Now, in looking at all, the, all this, you'll see a bunch of stuff cancels out. And we're left with this term, which is the term for the mass of a single slice. So again, let's go through, since we, it looks like we're starting to set up uh, an integral here, let's go through and integrate this just to see what we get. Just, just humor me, let's go run through this real quick. So what I wanna do is I wanna look at the, the mass of each slice all the way from zero to L. And we're integrating with respect to X, so I've got my constant sitting out front here. And look at this, we get a whole bunch of stuff cancels out. Our L squareds cancel out, one half and a two, and we're left with M. So what is this really telling us? Well, this is telling us that when we add up the mass of all of our teeny tiny little slices all the way along this entire wedge, we get that the total mass, just like we started with, is M. 
All right, so again, we haven't quite solved the problem here. We found the volume of a slice and the mass of a slice. Now what we need to do is figure out how to use this mass of a slice to find our original problem, and that is find the center of gravity. So realize the center of gravity is based on the masses at their particular positions. So if we look at the mass of a slice at a particular position, then we add it to the mass of a slice at a different position, plus an infinite number of other slices at an infinite number of other positions, we can come up with our center of gravity. And while that sounds like an infinite amount of work, it, it's not. So to find the center of gravity, we're gonna use this equation and I'm just gonna write this out in a little bit different way. Realize the center of gravity is just the sum of all of our different masses at different positions. And rather than writing it as a sum like this, I'm gonna write it as an infinite sum since we're dealing with an infinite number of slices along this wedge. So we have an infinite number of our slices of mass multiplied by their position, because here we've got mass times position. So I'm gonna have dmx. Again, more, more dmx, 2000s rap jokes, but nobody's gonna understand them because I'm old. It's all right, we lean into it. Uh, so here we go, dmx, over our total mass, okay? Now our total mass is m, we already figured that out, so we're not gonna run through that again. Uh, so all we're doing is just integrating the masses of our slices times their individual positions. So, got to be careful with this. I've got my term for dm. So this is my term for the mass of a slice. Now I want to multiply this again by x. And I'm not going to put an x over here. I'll just make this one squared. Save me a little time. Then I've got an m. So let's clean this up some. Okay, so our center of gravity is going to be given by this function, and I want you to realize we're integrating or we're looking at all of our little slices still from zero to L. So we're gonna make this a definite integral here, and then we'll evaluate this. We'll clean it up a little bit. And we find that the center of gravity along the x-axis is two thirds of L. Now go way back to the beginning of this, and we, we decided that the center of gravity needed to lie somewhere beyond one half L, and it needed to be less than L. That would sort of put us in this region right here. So if the center of gravity is two thirds L, that's, that's right about where I drew this slice right here, and that would effectively be the balance point of this wedge. So in summation, uh, this is how we find the center of gravity of a wedge, simply by applying some calculus to our center of gravity function. And on that note, that's all for now.